Welcome to the Max4 Laboratory. My name is Sverke Verin. I'm a professor in accelerator physics here at Max4 Laboratory and Lund University. Please join me in the tour of the accelerator of the laboratory. So we are now at the beginning of the accelerators here in Max4, where everything starts where we have the electron guns, the sources for the electrons being accelerated in the system. So what we see on this side over here, we see one of the guns, you can see what we call the waveguide, which feeds energy into the electron gun. Electrons are then accelerated in this branch coming over here and can be through a 120 degree turn injected into the main linear accelerator. This gun is used for the routine operation of the accelerators where we inject electrons into the storage rings. The function is such that we heat a cathode to roughly 1000 degrees. Uh, when that is heated like that, then the electrons are coming out from a metal piece and can be accelerated. On the tube there are different components. In here we have a solenoid magnet. It's meant to focus the electron beam early at the gun. We see other kind of coils here. These are correction magnets. We can simply make small corrections to the path of the electron beam. We have different chambers for diagnostics where we can look on the beam. We can insert screens and look on what the beam actually looks like, like here with a camera. And we follow down to what we call our energy filter. At the same time, you can see that there are a lot of other components sitting around the system. You can probably also hear a sound in the background, which are our vacuum pumps. So we have vacuum pumps sitting here and distributed at many different locations around the machine. These are meant to remove all the air that's in the system to get to a very low vacuum pressure so the electron can pass through the machine. But on the side here, we have a special electron gun. It's called our photocathode gun. On the view from the outside, it looks the same, but the function is slightly different. We have a laser beam coming from the adjacent room, shining onto the cathode. And when the laser hits the cathode, the cathode emits electrons, which we then can accelerate in the beam. This gun is used for special operations of the machine, like our short pulse facility and a similar system will also be used in our proposed upgrade project of a free electron laser later on. So we have now come a few steps along the linear accelerator. Here the electrons have reached 150 MeV as energy. The final energy is 3000 MeV, so we are just a short path on the way to the final goal. What you see here, these long structures which are put in aluminium foil are our linear accelerators. Unfortunately, we cannot see the details because the aluminium foil also covers an insulation to get temperature stability. One such structure is 5.2 meters long and we have more than 40 of them here at the laboratory. What you see in between here are the magnets. You can see that the magnets are bigger than we had at the, over at the electron gun. That's because the energy of the electron is higher and we need stronger magnets. This one is what we call a quadrupole. We'll see many of them when we walk down the laboratory. It has four poles, and that's our lenses in the system, just like our, my glass lenses over here. What we see up on the wall is part of the system feeding energy into the linear accelerator. That system is called a sled system. It takes energy, a pulse, from our radio transmitters on the other side of the concrete wall and it compresses them in time, so we get shorter but more intense pulses. These pulses are then fed through this copper tube, our waveguide, into the linear accelerators where we get the electric field that accelerates the electrons. You can also see that we have tubes for cooling water here. We are running water in all the systems to keep the temperature in the system at a constant level. So we have now come a little bit further down the accelerator line and here we have one of the specialities of the MAX4 LINAC. So what you see here is what we call a bunch compressor. So it can compress the electron bunch coming from the electron gun 
To begin with, the pulses are on the order of five picoseconds. In this magnetic system, we can compress them down to below one picoseconds. What you see is that the, the path is an S shape and it contains a lot of different magnets with nice colors. The different colors here shows for a different type of magnets. So we have bending magnets that can bend the beam. We have the orange correction magnets that just slightly adjust the path of the beam. We have the purple quadrupole focusing magnets. And then at some points we also have turquoise sextopole magnets, which takes other kinds of optical properties of the electron beam. So we have now come halfway down the linear accelerator. The electron energy is one and a half GeV, 1,500 million electron volts. And here is the first place where we can start to choose what we want to do with the electrons. This is an extraction point. We can extract the beam to get it into the small storage ring, the one and a half GeV ring. So the electrons are coming in this tube here in the accelerator. And here is a rapid magnetic system that can kick the beam to the side if we want to send it into the small storage ring. And from this, it continues into a bigger, slower magnet, which actually separates the electrons that we want to go up into the small storage rings and the electron that should continue straight on. And you can follow the path through additional magnets, how it goes up through the ceiling of the, the tunnel and to the ground floor where we have the small storage ring. If we switch this system on, the electrons will just go straight forward and will be accelerated for another one and a half GeV. And we have a similar system extracting the beam for the big storage ring, the three GeV ring at the very end. So we are now standing in the second tunnel underground. We have two 300 meter long tunnels. We have already been into the tunnel with the linear accelerator. But this is what we call the Kleistron Gallery. It's where the amplifiers creating the pulses driving the linear accelerator is situated. Behind my back, we have a thick concrete wall that separates us from the accelerator itself. But what we see here to begin with are our modulators. These are the devices that create the highly precision pulses necessary to drive the linear accelerator. Uh, the pulses coming from the modulator is though not powerful enough, so it has to be amplified. And that we can see on the backside. The Klystron is actually a small electron accelerator in itself. So an electron beam is accelerated inside here. And that can be used to amplify the three gigahertz frequency pulses that we need to run into the linear accelerator. You can see the copper tube going through the wall into the linear accelerator. So we are now in the big accelerator here at max 4, the 3 GV storage ring. It's roughly 500 meters in circumference. And what we see here is already some of the special things of this accelerator. Uh, we have these big yellow pieces sitting around. These are the magnets of the system. And if you remember from seeing on the linear accelerator where we had separate magnets, here everything is integrated into big units. And this has very big consequences for the accelerator design. So in here we have all these types of bending magnets, quadrupoles, sextopoles, that makes up the accelerator. By building them into these big blocks, we have realized a few different things. One thing is that we could make the magnets smaller and stronger. Another thing is that we could get a very good alignment, position of the different magnets as they are built into one separate piece. Between the magnets we can see the tube where the electrons are going. It's this black brown tube in between here. When building these magnets so very small, we also run into another problem and that was to pump vacuum in the system. We are, it, the machine is actually so tight in the details that we cannot place ordinary vacuum pumps. But this tube here has a special material on the inside called a neg material that pumps the system down so we can operate the machine. Another feature that we can see, maybe a little bit difficult, but these big yellow structures, the magnets are standing on concrete stands. 
in here. And that is because of vibration. This machine is very sensitive to vibrations, as all modern accelerators. The initial idea here was to put the accelerator on the floor to make not big wobbling legs on them, but that would have been very impractical. So instead, we created heavy, solid concrete structures where we put the magnets on. So the accelerator thinks it's almost on the floor, but it's easy to handle on this level. One more thing we could think that you do not realize while looking at this movie, but we who are re here realize, is that it's very warm in here. We have 27 degrees. And the reason is we want temperature stability. So we have chosen to be on one rather high temperature, which makes it easy to control what we are actually doing with the accelerator, keeping it stable. So here we are at one of the main components in the main accelerator produced synchrotron light. This is an undulator. So what you see is a big yellow frame keeping all the magnets that are inside of this undulator. If we look into the center, we can see that there is a thin tube or a flat tube in the middle and just above and below those there are different blocks. These blocks are magnets. What this device does is that it takes the electron beam and when the electron beam passes in here it feels magnetic fields and it starts to wiggle back and forth like this. And in each wiggle they will emit synchrotron light. All this light is continuing down in this direction and exits out into the beam line. To change the color or the wavelength of the light, we change the magnetic field. And that we do by mechanically moving these magnets blocks closer or away from the main chamber where the electrons are passing. Behind the main accelerator here, we can see another tube that comes from the tangent point where we have put the undulators creating the light from the accelerator. So electrons go here, the light comes over there. And we can see a number of different components in the line going out. Uh, these are mainly for protective purposes. See that there are no electrons leaking out and see that we contain the X-rays coming from the accelerator in the tube. Uh, we can follow it down the line and see where it exits through the radiation shielding wall to go out into the experimental floor. So that's the beam line, the starting of the beam line for x-rays coming out to the experimental station. Okay, now we are in front of one of the cavities of the, the storage ring. The idea of this device is to give energy to the electron beam. Uh, the electrons, they don't need to be accelerated more in the storage rings, but when they go around and pass the undulators, they will emit synchrotron light, and that is energy. That's an energy loss, and that energy has to be replaced. And that we do by electric fields in these cavities. So there are strong electric fields oscillating back and forth, and the electrons, when they pass, will get a small kick in energy. These cavities operate at 100 megahertz, which is a different frequency from most other storage rings. And the reason is a little bit of an anecdote. We wanted to get very simple in the construction. And thus we chose amplifiers which are easily available. 100 megahertz, that's roughly the frequency of an ordinary commercial radio station. So these cavities are driven by very simple technology. So here we see a, a prototype of one of the magnets of the 3 GV ring here at max 4. And what we can see is the integrated structure where all magnets are machined out of one solid iron block. And we see different magnets that has different function in here. Here we see a dipole magnet, which is a magnet with one big coil here, should come another coil on the top. These are meant to bend the beam around the storage ring. Here, in the middle, we see a quadrupole. We see two of the poles of a quadrupole. These are the lenses for our electrons in the accelerator. Towards the end here, we see four poles. It's part of an octopole, which can treat uh, high, what we call higher orders of the optics. It's like you are going to your optician and you, they will say that you have astigmatism or something like that. We treat it by these here. You can also see how things ha are miniaturized. You can see the power leads, you can see the very small coils here. And for those of you who have nothing to compare with, I can assure you that this is very small to be an accelerator for 3 GeV. You can later compare with what it looked on our old accelerators, the Max 2 1.5 GeV machine. 
So we are now standing in front of a piece of the MAX2 accelerator. It was a one and a half GeV machine operated up until 2015 down at the university campus here in Lund. And what we see are quadrupoles and dipole magnets. One can compare it to what we saw on the size of the magnets in the MAX4 machine. Here we see a part of one of the linear accelerators. It's actually a cutout part as you can see, it's not functioning anymore. When we visited the basement, this was covered in isolation material, so we could not see the structure. And what we can see here is that there are what we call cavities, cells here with roughly the size of a, of a tuna can that you can buy in your supermarket. In the middle, there is a hole where the electrons can pass down the accelerator. These cavities are built such that we can get an electric field oscillating back and forth in the cells which will accelerate the electrons as they pass through the system. These are normally five meters long and contains more than 100 cells in each of them. Every cell is tuned to a perfect frequency to oscillate exactly at three gigahertz. But if we want to change the frequency afterwards, we have to do that by changing the temperature of the structure. So that's why we have water tubes attached on the outside surfaces here. We can run water with different temperature and then change the size of the structure and then change the frequency that we can operate with. So thank you very much for joining this tour of the Max4 Facility Accelerators.